Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is the third Sunday of Easter. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, Two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. <clears throat> but they were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were, uh, or they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke! Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things, and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for today it is or for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found together or where they found gathered together the 11 and those with them who were saying the lord has truly been raised and has appeared to simon then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread <clears throat> the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ This is probably one of my favorite resurrection accounts because there's so much packed into it. You have these two, Cleopas and his companions, that clearly were disciples of Jesus and present in the upper room and uh, had been there perhaps even for the Last Supper. Now, on the third day, as uh, they heard word that uh, the body of Jesus was missing And they heard accounts that uh, some of the women had even seen angels. But there was no real evidence of where Jesus might have been. And so Cleopas and his companion were going back to Emmaus. And from the account here, they are downcast. So they're they're not in a good place. They They hadn't stayed long enough to hear that Jesus had appeared to others, but rather had gone ahead and left and Uh, going back to Emmaus, perhaps going back to their old way of life, thinking that, well, it's all over. And while they were on their way, uh, leaving their mission, 
and going back home, there as they were walking along was Jesus, who was also walking down the road. And so they began walking together. And at this point, the conversation turned toward what the two had just experienced in Jerusalem and how uh, Jesus had uh, been crucified and now in the tomb he was no longer to be found. And then they made this amazing statement because they had hope. And they said, we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it's now the third day since this took place. So they had hoped that he would be one that would come and overturn everything, overturn the Roman government, overturn the bondage that they were under and all kinds of things. But rather, he went to the cross. He died. He was placed in a tomb. And now the body is gone. So they were downcast. They were, they were very, very sad. And then Jesus speaks to them. And it's interesting, again, that uh, this is the second time in the uh, accounts after his resurrection that he encounters some people who do not know who he is. That happened to Mary Magdalene, who didn't recognize him and thought he was the gardener. And now the two on the road, who had been with him before. There's something about Jesus in his post-resurrection appearance that made him somewhat different. And so here, as they were walking along, he began to talk to them from the Old Testament scriptures, the Hebrew Bible. And he explained from, from the writings of Moses, which were the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, the law, and from the prophets. He began to talk to them about the Messiah and what the Messiah was truly called to do. It was a uh, an amazing time. In fact, later on, these two said their hearts were burning within us when he was talking. And then they arrived at the place where they were going. They arrived in Emmaus. And going into probably one of their homes, uh, they invited Jesus to stay for, for a meal because it was getting later in the day. So he went in, and it was during the meal when they were doing what is normally done at every single meal by a, a, a Jewish uh, household, that at the beginning of the meal, there was always the taking of a piece of bread, the blessing of the bread, the breaking of the bread, and prayer over that bread. And it was a, a beautiful, beautiful uh, ceremony that took place every time they ate, and they would take the bread, they would break it, and they would say, Baruch Adonai Elohenu, and would go on uh, in this Hebrew prayer, blessed be God. Uh, and it was a way for them to give thanks for the meal. And in that prayer of thanksgiving, in that breaking of bread, Jesus was made known to them. They realized who he was, and he disappeared from their sight. Well, they went back and told everybody what happened. And it's a, a beautiful thing because not only did they tell the, uh, the other disciples about what happened, but they also heard that Jesus had appeared to others. And just as they were speaking, Jesus appears. What a beautiful, beautiful way for them to be returned to mission, that Jesus met with them and turned them back toward the way that they should go. And one of the things about this is that this is really the journey of the Mass. This is really, you could call our uh, involvement in the Mass an Emmaus journey. As we enter in, we, of course, enter in uh, on, a, on a journey that really it uh, can just be going to our seat. And we first dip our hands in the holy water and we make the sign of the cross, which is a reminder of the fact that uh, it is through our baptism that we have uh, brought, been brought into relationship with Christ and his church. And then in the uh, first part of the Mass, the Liturgy of the Word, we hear the scriptures. Just as Jesus had explained them, we hear a reading normally from the Old Testament, except uh, during uh Easter, we have the first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. But we have readings from the Scripture, the Old and the New Testament on Sundays. And then we have a gospel reading where we encounter Jesus through his word. And our prayer needs to be, Lord, may my heart be burning 
with love for you as I hear your word, just as the disciples on the road to Emmaus had their hearts burning when the scriptures were explained. And then there is the uh, uh, breaking of bread that takes place at the meal. Well, for us, that's the liturgy of the Eucharist when we are uh, getting ready to take Holy Communion. But first, in the liturgy of the Eucharist, there is the Eucharistic prayer. And we follow the same action. We take bread, we bless it, and we break it. And many people don't even recognize the fact that the bread is broken during the Mass. And that happens as uh, the congregation is singing, The Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. During that time, the priest takes and breaks the bread. And then it is after that that the pieces, the broken pieces, are presented uh, normally uh, along with the chalice. At sometimes it is just uh, the body of our Lord with the, with the patent and the other hosts. And uh, the words are spoken, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. So now Jesus is again made present to us in that one beautiful action. Behold the Lamb of God. And we partake of him and realize in that partaking that he is present to us. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, the takeaway today is let's look at the Mass perhaps in a different way. As we enter, let us think about the fact that we're entering into a journey with Jesus, that we are journeying first through the Word, through the Scriptures, and then we are journeying with Him at the time of the meal where He is made present to us in the breaking of bread. And it is through that Eucharistic prayer that uh, Jesus becomes present to us as Bread and wine become transubstantiated into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus. And so when we take of him, when we go up and we say amen, when the body of Christ is presented to us, we then are affirming the fact that this is an Emmaus journey, and we are truly partaking of the one who is revealed to us in the breaking of bread. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.